In this video, we will discuss new features of the TRIO QVHF licensed data radio and demonstrate advantages of using the VHF frequency band. There are currently four models of TRIO data radios. Two of these, Q series and J series, include both Ethernet and serial data interfaces. Two others, M series and K series, are serial only. It can also be noted that the Q and M types are narrowband licensed radios, while the J and K radios are frequency hopping license free radios. This chart shows the radio spectrum between 100 and 800 megahertz. The UHF, or ultra high frequency versions of the Q data radio, operate in the range of 400 to 518 megahertz. The new VHF, or very high frequency version, operates in the range of 135 to 175 megahertz. Note that the size of an antenna of any specific gain is inversely proportional to the frequency, so VHF antennas can be much larger than UHF antennas. Also, noise generated by artificial sources tends to be somewhat higher at lower frequencies. This must be taken into account also. But path losses are typically significantly lower, offsetting noise issues. Also, in many areas, it can be easier to acquire a VHF license. Trio Q VHF data radios are long range narrow bandwidth licensed data radios based on the highly successful Trio Q platform. They include similar features and functionality to the UHF Q radios with significant differences. These include operating on a much lower frequency range, the addition of two digital I.O. points to the remote radios, and a configurable separate receive antenna port on the remote radios. Key benefits of the QVHF data radio are the long-range operational capabilities at all speeds, excellent propagation characteristics over difficult terrain, and less license congestion in many areas when compared with the UHF frequency range. Here is an image showing the front panel of a TRIO QR150 remote type data radio. We will discuss specifics on the next few slides. One important change is the inclusion of a separate receive-only antenna port. Default operation is for the radio to transmit or receive on the TNC antenna connector. The SMA type receive-only connector saves space on the radio's front panel. Separating the transmit and receive signals can allow the addition of an external bandpass or notch filter to protect the receiver from strong nearby transmitters. As noted earlier, VHF antennas are typically about three times larger than equivalent gain UHF antennas. This often requires use of lower gain antennas due to size and cost constraints. Lower gain antennas, however, do not provide as much off-path noise rejection as higher gain antennas. A filter can help in such cases. Alternately, with the use of separate transmit and receive ports, a QR150 may be installed at a community site where multiple transmitters and receivers are multi-coupled into a single antenna. The receive antenna port may be optionally enabled in the configuration interface. It can be seen that the QR150 housing includes a large heatsink which allows the QR150 to remain cooler even when operating at full power output. This helps to offset the lower gain antennas typically used at VHF frequencies and allows a higher transmit duty cycle when compared with many other remote type radios. The QR150 is about 56 millimeters tall. The power connector of the QR150 has been changed to include two additional terminals. This allows the inclusion of two digital input or output points. Wiring of these points is the same as with the QB and QP rack mounted radios, which each have three digital inputs and three digital outputs. These I.O. points are monitored and controlled using either an SNMP manager software package or TRIO's no-cost TVU Plus management suite. Wiring is straightforward. To monitor input conditions, tie the input point to earth ground via an external switch to set the point's state to on, or leave it floating to signal an off state. If controlling outputs, when a remote on command is sent, the output is tied internally to earth ground to complete an electrical circuit. Note that if an I.O. point is designated as an input, ensure the output point remains off. Now we will move on to demonstrate benefits of using the much lower VHF frequency range instead of the UHF radio spectrum. In this image, we see a terrain map including two sites. A master radio site has been installed on a hilltop in the northwest. 
A remote site with its directional antenna aimed at the master has been installed in a valley in the southeast, many kilometers away. Here, a radio signal coverage map has been generated using typical antenna gain, transmit power, and receiver sensitivity, and with a frequency of 450 megahertz. It can be seen that there are some areas near the master where an excellent or very strong signal may be heard. There are larger areas where very good signals can be heard than some areas where good, acceptable, or poor signals may be heard. However, there are large gray areas where no signal will be heard. Note that the remote site is in the acceptable signal level area, but is close to a no signal area. Using the same antenna height and gain, same transmit power and receiver sensitivity, the map was regenerated using a frequency of 150 megahertz. It can be seen that there are now few no signal areas and only small low-lying patches where a poor signal will be received. The excellent and very good signal areas are much larger. In this example, the remote site is safely within a good signal area. Here, a path has been tested using both VHF and UHF frequencies using the same transmit power, receive sensitivity, and antenna heights. In the VHF analysis, note the 8 dBi receive site antenna and the minus 53 dBm signal level. In the UHF analysis, the signal level is similar, but a 13 dBi antenna was required to provide the signal level. This path is longer, at almost 27 kilometers, and the remote site is in a valley, causing significant path obstructions. At VHF, with an 8 dBi antenna at the remote, the signal level is minus 72 dBm. But at UHF, even with the use of a high-gain 13 dBi antenna, the signal level drops to about minus 81 dBm. The modeling of real-world wireless paths is complex due to the many and varied type of obstructions. These include trees, buildings, and terrain. Care must be used as the actual results can vary significantly from computer models if accurate data is not used. However, generally speaking, the use of VHF has several benefits. Signals will have much lower free space loss than at UHF, approximately 9 to 11 dB depending on the exact frequencies compared. VHF signals can better diffract over and around hilly and mountainous terrain and will also experience less loss in forested areas or through wet foliage. Trio Q VHF data radios are a valuable addition to the RF system designer's toolkit. The receive only antenna port provides more filtering options. The larger heatsink assists with operation at full transmit power, helping to offset the lower gain antennas typically used at VHF. The inclusion of two digital I.O. points adds the ability to perform basic monitoring and or control without the need for an RTU. And lower propagation losses can allow VHF signals to travel significantly farther. Thank you for watching this video which showed new features of the TRIO QR150 VHF licensed data radio and demonstrated advantages of using the VHF frequency band.